There isn't anything that you can possibly do that makes you more competent in everything you do than to learn how to communicate. Never make a point without a story and never tell a story without a point. I'll give you a couple of key things on speaking for everybody. Want to be happy? Build a life, not just a business. Living that believe in life. Out here living that believe in life. Every day we living that believe in life. What's the life we living that believe in life? Living life, yeah, so we grinding it out. Every single day we be grinding it out. What's the life we living that believe in life for? That believe in life for. So today let's live your best believe life and learn how to master your communication skills. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one. Believe in what you say with Ed Milet. My first time I talked, I literally went up and blanked out. Like I literally could not think, I could not see the card. How I fixed it speaking was over time, but I'll give you a couple of key things on speaking for everybody. One, I had to, I had to figure out, you know what someone said to me, because you love baseball. You don't stutter when you talk about baseball. You don't get insecure. I go, well, I love that and I believe in it. They're like, oh, you don't, you know, you talk about your kids, you're great. I thought, oh, there's a correlation here between me actually saying what I believe and what I'm passionate about and my ability to communicate it. And so that now my first layer is always, I must be passionate about it and I must believe it and I'm never doing an impression of another person. So I always come from a place of saying what I really believe because you can't transfer to somebody that which you don't experience yourself. I can give you passion, I can give you energy, I can give you my belief if I'm experiencing it. Big key as a speaker, I'll give everybody. Stop trying to convince everybody of what you're saying. That's not the threshold of being a good communicator. People do not need to believe what you're saying. They need to believe you believe what you're saying. And as long as they believe you believe what you're saying, you're an effective speaker. I stopped trying to get people to believe me. There's a neediness. There's a salesmanship to that. I stopped that. It's a subtle difference. I just want you to believe I believe it. That's influence. Influence is you believe I believe it. Rule number two, be open to the unknown with Simon Sinek. Rarely are we instant experts. You may have a particular gift or um, affinity towards something, but you still get better. Um, you know, people would pay me high compliments when I started speaking, and then people who've seen me a year or two later say that I'm even better, and I feel it. Um, Why is that? Because you, you, you learn more, you know? I, I think that hubris is dangerous. I think to think that you're an expert in anything is a, is a foolish pursuit. Um, you're never you're never as good as you could be. There's always room for improvement. There's always room to get better. Um, you don't, that doesn't mean you have to listen to all the advice. Um, just, you know, n not necessarily does everybody know best, but, but to believe that you can be better and to believe that you can offer more um, is, is a constant pursuit. Um, you know, I used to think being a public speaker meant being poised and presenting in a way that was compelling and speaking at the right pace. And that's, that's a part of it. Um, but, but I um, have been taking more risks lately doing things that are very unstructured and very uncomfortable. And I will now do, like if I have an hour to speak, I'd rather speak for 20 minutes and do 40 minutes worth of questions. Mm -hmm. And who knows how that's gonna go. And that to me is the best. And so I'm a better speaker because now I'm way more open to the unknown, where a few years ago that, that would have scared me. <laughs> Also, if you want to learn how to build your confidence, check out my 254 Confidence Series. It's free. The link is in the description below. And even though I'm going to sell you the most beautiful hammer, I'm not getting guaranteed the structural integrity of the house. If you're going to speak effectively, you have to know way more than you're talking about. Rule number three, practice more with Jordan Peterson. I'm incredibly cool. nervous to uh, talk in front of you because you've got to be one of the most formidable people that I've ever heard of or ever listened to or ever seen. So my question is, again, you're one of the best communicators that I've ever listened to. If I could be half as good at you or at communicating as you are, I would be set. How can I teach myself to do that? Practice, you know, really like, well, there's a couple of things is helps to read a lot. It really helps to write. So if you want to make yourself articulate, which is a very good idea, then not only should you read, but you should write down what you think. And if you can do that a little bit every day, 15 minutes, maybe you could steal 15 minutes and do it every day. But if you do that for 10 years, 
you really straighten out your thinking. If you're going to speak effectively, you have to know way more than you're talking about. You know, so if you this is often difficult for beginning lecturers at university because they'll do a lecture on a topic, but they only know as much as they're saying in the lecture, and they get kind of stuck to their notes because of it. But you want to know ten times as much as you are saying in the lecture, and then you can specify a stepping path through it and elaborate with the other things that you know. But to do that, you have to do a lot of reading. But you also have to do a lot of reading because that's where the synthesize, that's where the synthesizing comes. So that's on the input side. And then on the output side, well, there's some tricks, techniques, let's say. Is like if you're speaking in front of a group, you are not delivering a talk to a group. That's not what you're doing. The talk isn't a packaged thing that you present to a group. There isn't a group. There's a bunch of individuals. And you talk to them. So when I talk to a group, I always talk to people one at a time. And that makes it easier, too, because you know how to talk to a person. It's like, can you talk to a thousand people? Well, probably not, because it's too intimidating. But there isn't a thousand people there. There's a thousand individuals. And so you just look at an individual, and you say something. And you can tell if they're engaged. They look confused, or they look interested, or they look angry, or they look bored, or maybe they're asleep, in which case you look at someone else. <laughs> And they, they give you feedback about how you're doing. And so one thing is to, to have something to say, yeah. But the next thing is pay attention to who you're talking to. Because unless you're very badly socialized, and that seems unlikely in your case, because you, know, you present yourself at least moderately well, you know. And well, I mean, I don't know you very well, but on first, but on first sight, you know, you're, you're doing fine. So the probability that if you pay attention to the individuals that you're talking to, that your natural wealth of, of social skill will manifest itself is extremely high. And so you don't deliver a talk to an audience. That's a really bad way of thinking about it. You're actually engaged in a conversation with an audience. Even if they're not talking, they're nodding and shifting position and you know looking like this. Or, and you can, you can pull all that in and, and, and use it to govern the level at which you're addressing the entire audience. So the last thing I would say is, well, having the aim to be a good communicator is a good start. And you think, well, I could buttress that to some degree. Well, there isn't anything that you can possibly, this is the whole point of a liberal education. There isn't anything that you can possibly do that makes you more competent in everything you do than to learn how to communicate. I don't care if you're going to be a carpenter. I mean, being a carpenter, by the way, is very difficult, especially if you're a good carpenter. But if you're good at communicating as a carpenter, you're like 10 times better as a carpenter. So the, and this is something that the liberal arts colleges, I think, have, I don't know if they've forgotten it, but they don't do a very good job of marketing. It's like, well, what's the use of a bachelor's degree, a bachelor of arts? It's like, well, you can think, you can write, you can speak, you've read something. It's like the economic value of that is incalculable. The people that I've watched in my life who've been spectacularly successful are, they have skills, clearly. That, that's a minimum precondition. But they're also very, very good at articulating themselves. And so whenever they negotiate, they're successful. Well, that's kind of like the definition of success in life, right? You negotiate and you're successful. It doesn't mean you win, because if you're a good negotiator, if you're a really good negotiator, everybody walks away from the negotiation thrilled. And so then people line up to do things with you. So, and that's all, that's all dependent on your ability to communicate. So, practice. Rule number four, master storytelling with Les Brown. Never make a point without a story and never tell a story without a point. That's number one, that's mm -hmm. key because stories can be used to transform to people's points, lives. Right? Yeah. Not just anchor the points, but it creates a significant emotional event. And that's how human behavior is transformed. We have emotional, em uh, emotional memory. The next thing in, in speaking, there is some fear, and that fear is always there. I never assume that I know what that audience is going to believe. Each audience, they have their own personality. And each audience... The audience inside of each audience is hmm. separated by age, by race, by income, by yeah. education. 
the other thing that's crucial in speaking is that as you speak and as you look at the audience, always take the time to find out who they are and all that get and get understanding. So I have a needs assessment that I sent out and I ask them questions. You know, what are the things that you want this audience to walk away with? What are the things that you've done? Things that that's stressing you out. What's the unspoken conversation? Mm -hmm. So I sent out this needs assessment. I talk with the CEO. I do research to find out their mission statement. I talk to the marketing director. Mm -hmm. And then I interview the top performers. If it's a sales organization, I talk to the top performers. And then the next step, I interview people in the audience. If you are in my position, wow. what are the things that people in the audience need to hear if you were in my position that you would suggest? I ask them individually, these five people. And then when I'm on stage, I integrate that. I marry that to navigate an experience. As I said, Oliver Wendell Holmes said that once a man or woman's mind has been expanded with an idea, concept, or experience, it can never be satisfied to going back to where it was. So when you bring mm -hmm. all of those elements in there with humor, with quotes, statistics, and stories, you are able to create special moments mm -hmm. that can transform that audience. The other thing, when you tell a story, don't just tell the story experience the story and the audience will go there with you. Mm, be Those the story. The, yes, yeah, yeah. you've got to be the story, the embodiment of the story so that the audience as a result of hearing it that they can't rest, that you mm. start showing up in their dreams. And rule number five, the last one before a very special bonus clip is commit emotionally with me. This is where a lot of entrepreneurs really fall down. You've got your powerful opinion, you know what you stand for, you know what you're trying to communicate, but when you get in front of a camera or when you get down to writing, it doesn't sway people. It's not emotional enough. You could be saying all the best words when you get in front of a camera to make a video, but because you are talking in a very boring, very non-exciting manner and because you're so worried about saying the perfect words that you are memorizing something or you are looking at your script or trying to read from a teleprompter nobody is going to care or listen to you you need to have emotional commitment you need to feel the thing and how important it is while you are saying it for me I'm envisioning all of you. I'm envisioning all the entrepreneurs that I've worked with who have these amazing ideas and they never get them out because they can't communicate. And even though I'm sitting here in an office by myself and there's nobody around to actually connect with, I'm just talking to a camera. I'm trying to channel you. I'm trying to channel all the people that I've connected with and seen. And I want to make sure that your business does well. And communicating is so important as part of that, which is why I'm doing this video. And hopefully the care, the love, the energy comes through in the content that I make. And so sales and convincing people, not in a against what they want, but in a positive way, like this is something that you guys can get together on, is about the energy transfer. You are not just selling a concept or an idea, you are transferring energy. Whoever is more confident wins. Whoever is more convincing wins. And it's usually from whoever believes in their thing more. If you absolutely believe in your thing and that this is right and it's for them and they need to do this thing because it's in their best interest, not because they're just trying to sell something down their throat, but you really, 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 really care. And if they feel that care as opposed to just words that you're saying, that's how you bring them on board. It's great to have the best words but more important is the emotional commitment that you have behind them. Now I've got a special bonus clip from Dan Locke on how to create participation energy that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the three point landing questions. Time to go from just watching a video to taking action. Here we go. Question number one, where in your week will you commit to practicing your communication skills? Number two, what is the most important message that you believe in that you need to spread? And number three, what will you remind yourself of before filming so that you will commit emotionally to the message? I always want to create what I call a participation energy. Participation energy, meaning I want them to participate. So imagine if I'm on stage and I'm just talking and talking and talking and talking and, and lecturing, right? And preaching about certain concepts. Well, it's easy to get nervous because you're always worried about if I'm saying the right thing. 
But if I have a participation energy going on, a learning energy, a, a fun energy going on, example, I would always ask them, hey, how many of you believe in this? How many agree with that? How many ever experienced this? I get them to put up their hand. I get them to yell back the answer. I get them to fill in the blank. I get them to discussion, talking among each other. When I create that kind of safe energy, celebration energy, learning energy, guess what? You get less nervous. If you wanna master your communication skills with Stephen Kelly, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. I hope we're of uh, value for you guys and we're helping you grow your businesses, be successful, live your dreams. So if we can do that, you know,